here we are going to look at the derivative of e to the x. So if f of x equals e to the x, we are interested in its derivative. Now recall that e is the number that is defined by this limit right here. The limit as x goes to infinity, 1 plus 1 over x to the x. What that limit goes to, we have called e. And it's numerically about 2.7. So if we looked at the graph of e to the x, it's an exponential graph that passes through the point 0, 1, and it sits between 3 to the x and 2 to the x, and it's closer to 3 to the x than 2 to the x, right, because e is about 2.7 to the x, all right? Now, in order to find the derivative of e to the x algebraically, we need a particular limit. The limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 all over h is equal to 1. And you can explore that graphically or numerically to see that. All right, so let's now go about finding the derivative algebraically of f of x equals e to the x. Let's go back to our definition. So the derivative is the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x all over h. Right? There's my f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now we use our rules of exponents. So this is the limit as h goes to 0, e to the x times e to the h. Right? If we multiply like bases, we add their exponents, minus e to the x all over h. I'm going to factor out this e to the x. Limit h to 0, e to the x. I leave behind an e to the h minus 1 all over h. And again, since this, since x is not dependent on h, I can move it in front of the limit. So I have e to the x times the limit as h goes to 0 e to the h minus 1 over h. And as I promised, we need this limit right here. This limit goes off to 1, and I'm left with e to the x. And that is very cool. What we've just shown is that f of x equals e to the x, its derivative is itself. And that is very cool. It is the only exponential function such that it's its own derivative, and that is very cool.